fundamental issue with the self will passive is not that it gives individual agency to the player, is that it actively rewards bad fundamental overwatch by making concepts like spacing, timing, positioning, LOS checks, staging, and even knowing your comp matchups less meaningful. Okay, so our new director's take just released about an hour ago. I was supposed to be voice recording this next video, but this is a really important change that it warrants its own video. But as you can read on screen, all heroes in Season 9 are reporting to get a self heal passive that's toned down from the support passive. And Twitter has been going crazy about this. I mean, you can already see 700 comments there, 4.6k likes, 2,500 quote retweets, and this has just been announced an hour ago. However, I do want to provide some nuance to this because, you know, Twitter is Twitter, there's going to be a lot of knee-jerk reactions to this change, and arguably so, but I think I do want to address the positives, even if they are weak, and the implications for this change, and why it's probably going to be a bad thing for Overwatch 2. So one of the biggest claimed benefits to this is that it makes heroes less individually frustrating. So for example, if you know supports don't heal you, if maybe you're playing Widowmaker at the back and you take a little bit of chip damage that you need healing up, it can be frustrating to have to ask supports constantly to get that healing, whereas this passive can fix that issue. However, I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty weak argument. Um, HP packs exist guys, they exist for a reason, and those are your sustain methods, right? Especially when you're playing heroes like Tracer, which we'll get onto, but yeah, I don't think that's a very good positive. Another claimed benefit, and this was in the director's take, was that it should also take some of the pressure off support players to keep everyone alive, since individual players now have more control of their own health pool. This, this idea or this argument of relieving pressure of support players, what pressure is on them? Support is already the most broken role in the game, and if we look at the new th or the th most three support heroes, the most common support heroes that have been added, Lifeweaver, he's not stressful at all. He's very defensive, he's got two forms of sustain in his dash and his puzzle platform as well. There's no reason or reason to worry as playing Lifeweaver. Iliori literally has her own healing pylon that has its own health pool and is hard to take down as is and was the most common concern of Iliori when she was OP and people were complaining about her. It was how broken the pylon was in combination with her damage. And then Kiriko has mainly just been the mobility in the TP and the Suzu, right? I just don't see where the devs are coming from in terms of, oh yeah, supports need pressure relieved, because the three most common supports that have been released don't have much pressure onto them. They're not feeling the pressure. And that's really it for the pro section, because I can't really think of any more benefits that you could give players, apart from that main one being that you give them more autonomy when they're in situations where, you know, team play, there isn't any team play, right? Um, and I'll get onto that later with the cons and how this makes the game feel a lot more deathmatchy, but yeah. One of the biggest cons with this change is that DPS heroes, who are already strong, not because of their low sustain, or despite their low sustain, are going to be giga buffed because of this, or going to be buffed disproportionately compared to heroes who are strong because of their sustain. So if you look at heroes like Tracer, Genji, Sombra, these are all heroes that have literally no self-healing or no self-sustain at all, and are strong because of their mobility and partially in part because of their range. Whereas heroes who do have self-sustain, like Mei, Reaper, and Soldier, they're going to benefit less from this change because they already have forms of self-heal. Like just imagine a Tracer zipping around your backline who doesn't need to play LOS with her backline, and again I'll get onto that later, but she can just do whatever she wants and as long as she's got fairly good cover usage, she can just get healed by the passive and just have her uptime be constant, like almost 24-7. The counter argument to this is that you could tune the passive to adjust for these heroes like Tracer, Genji, and Sombra. Far would also fall, on, fall under this too, but Farah is already in such a state that I don't think she needs enough with the passive. But as we've seen, the devs aren't keen in making the raw passive specific to each hero, right? We've already seen this in the, in the DPS passive with the reload change, where heroes like Genji benefited a lot more from faster reloads compared to heroes like Hanzo and Widowmaker. Another negative is that it's going to be frustrating to try and finish someone off. Again, if you get someone to really low HP, they duck behind cover, and then they just start self-healing, and then maybe they get their cooldowns back, and then they can just teleport or wraith away or just escape and use an escape cooldown. That can be really annoying. 
And this really leads into the biggest negative with this change, and that's the lack of team play. That this really promotes randomness, it promotes deathmatch, it doesn't promote team play. And I think Aaron Keller says here, around the 50 second mark, I'll skip to it in editing, but he says that Overwatch is a team play game. But why say that and then make this change which actively promotes an anti-team play style and promotes more individuality? Overwatch is a team-based, hero-based, competitive first-person shooter. And team-based. Now, the counter-argument that Aaron goes on to say is that not in all situations are players in a game going to be wanting to play like a team. So introducing changes, like even 5v5 for example, or this team, you know, heal passive change to all the roles is going to give more individuality to the players. My counter-argument to that is it's going to push it too much into that individuality direction. If we already compare this version of the game with the team passives and it being 5v5, compare that to 6v6 Overwatch with one more hero, more complexity to the game, this is too far in that one direction in my opinion. And to try and make this argument less substantial, and to try and make this argument less wishy-washy and to make it more substantial, there was a tweet made by Mentally Boomed or, you know, the gaffer. He is a tier 3 coach, 7471 Ignite and Raid. Essentially, he knows what he's talking about. And he quote tweets by saying, the backbone of the PV PV PvP experience was how well you could use space and downtime to create advantages and matchups and create plays. Spacing as a concept has been fucking abandoned. Now, what does he mean by that? Can I give an example of what he means? And hopefully I'm not, you know, misrepresenting his argument, but let's take the simple dive matchup, right? And I'm working on a dive guide right now. This is the thumbnail for it, so you can see. Um, but let's just take the dive matchup, right? And say you're trying to play dive into a poke. What does dive want to do fundamentally, right? First off, to stage, right? To try and take angles around that poke comp and surround them with their added mobility and to make sure they don't take damage during the staging stage, right? That's a bit weird, but this essentially, when you're setting up, don't take damage. And that's the opposite of what the poke comp want to do. The poke comp, they want to damage these guys during the staging. They want to prevent the dive from happening. How do they do that? They do that with their poke. They do that with their range. And what the self heal passive is going to do is that it's going to make the staging of the dive team less punishing, right? Because if you're playing Tracer and let's say you take a Zen Orb, right? And you can't go in because you've just taken a Zen Orb, right? Now with the self heal passive, you just go behind cover and you heal that up. That reward that you get as Zen from shooting that Tracer, a small hitbox from 30 meters away, doesn't get rewarded. And I assume this is what mentally boomed means when he says that spacing as a concept has been abandoned, right? You don't get rewarded for control space as Zenyatta against Dive, you don't. And the inverse is true, you don't get punished as Tracer for taking that damage in the first place. And if there's one thing you take away from this video, it's going to be this. The fundamental issue with the self will passive is not that it gives individual agency to the player, is that it actively rewards bad fundamental overwatch by making concepts like spacing, timing, positioning, LOS checks, staging, and even knowing your comp matchups less meaningful. If you if you engage early as Tracer, guess what? You can blink away to cover and just get healed back up. If you're in a bad position as Soldier and you take damage early on because you're stacking main, guess what? You can rotate to a different flank and heal up with the passive while you're rotating. You don't get punished for that. If you're playing a flanker like Genji, Echo, Somber, Tracer, literally any flanker in the game, you don't have to worry about your backline's LOS because you, you can just duck behind cover and get passively healed. Those key positional concepts that act as a foundation for pretty much every hero in the game doesn't get rewarded as much if you do them because of the self heal passive. And to give further credibility to the argument here, we can see Hawk, who is a tier 1 professional player, probably the best Western tank in the game. He states, We move further away from what I loved about the game. All of these changes promote no team play, deathmatch, and randomness. Overwatch 1 to 2 gameplay flow is unrecognizable. Overwatch 2 alphas and betas today is unrecognizable. And he's absolutely right, you know? Anyone who's played the game since 2016, the game in terms of its individuality and its team play and the deathmatchiness is completely different on the two different scales, right? And 5v5 was already a change in that individual direction to give people more autonomy while balancing out with the team play. But I think the self heal passive is going to be too much and it's going to push that direction too much in the individual direction. 
So in essence, it, it, this change just further tells me that the devs don't actually care about competitive Overwatch. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Okay. Oh, I didn't know I had that mod on. Okay. Oh. Whoa. So yeah, in summary, these changes tell me that the devs don't actually know what they're cooking with how Overwatch is going to be balanced. It tells me that they're being contradictory in terms of, you know, Overwatch being a team play and competitive based shooter. These changes, or the Soul Field one in particular, shows me that the game is not going in a competitive direction, nor is it going into a team play direction either. And listen, I literally took a picture with Aaron Keller at Grand Finals, like, I sympathize at least with his position in terms of how to balance the game but you know it stuff needs to be called out i will say it does kind of make me feel a bit icky to see people like absolutely dogpiling the devs and while they should be critiqued for this change just be a little bit more empathetic about what you say um yeah i just thought i'd mention that but yeah that's it for the video let me know your thoughts down below and until next time